We debating, going toe to toe. No holding back, I'm speaking the facts. Let me introduce you to the dope show. Nerdy D and Milwaukee Mike, bringing the energy. If you a fan of wrestling, and especially WWE, this is the casual wrestling show. Casual wrestling show. We got opinions, we letting them know. Casual wrestling show. Hey, ain't no holding back. What's up, guys? This is the Casual Wrestling Community Show. I am the Notorious Nerdy D alongside my guy, Milwaukee Mike. Tonight, we dive deep into the We Want Cody movement. We talk about Thursday's big press conference, and we break down Drew McIntyre's big resurgence. Mike, unless a wrestling fan has been living under a rock for the last week, uh, and that's pun intended, living under the rock, (laughs) there's really only one thing that everybody wants to talk about this week. And that is what, in my opinion, is possibly the worst booking decision I've ever seen in my entire life. I know it, it's the IWC thing to overreact, but I'm overreacting to this one. I do. I have no fucking clue. I, cause I was the big one who said it was all a smoke screen. So I've got to defend myself here. I don't know what that, what the hell happened. I, I, I understand from a business standpoint, I understand when you put Roman Reigns and The Rock on a poster, that sells tickets. But did did this WrestleMania really need to sell tickets? Like I thought we were I thought we were headed in the right direction the way we were going. This feels like a gross overreaction to the Vince McMahon situation to me this feels i i said it with pat mcafee i thought that that was a that was an overreaction to needing headlines i think this vince mcmahon thing has gotten even more out of control than they ever thought it would be and i think they started looking around and going we need headlines we need something that's going to get people talking about something else and i think they thought bringing in the rock was going to be that thing that everybody was like oh my god we finally got what we wanted and i think they're finding out quickly that this isn't what most people wanted that that this is for the most part i would say now i've seen the we want rocky and i've seen the we want cody and it feels to me at least like we're far more on the side of seeing people say we want cody it, it seems like a yeah. consensus to me that, that a lot of casual and IWC are, are both on the side of Cody Rhodes at this part. But I, I don't know, Mike, I felt like, I, I just felt like Triple H was more self-aware than this. I, I thought that Triple H was going to kind of take the Vince McMahon style of shoving things down our throat. And, and he was going to be the guy that kind of changed the culture al- along with TKO. But what it feels like to me is is Triple H and The Rock may not be self-aware. I see The Rock out here tweeting things, you know, regarding like, you know, it feels good to be back, the goosebumps and all of that kind of stuff. And and I, I just, is The Rock not looking at social media? You know, D- does he just not, is it, you know, maybe he doesn't control his own social media. Maybe that's what it is. But to me, it feels like The Rock and Triple H are so, unaware at this point all if you look at the rock social media and not just the part that's pertaining to wrestling if you look at the terramata you look at the ufl there are people just going after him like crazy as as far as this whole situation goes and i honestly think this was a huge mistake on wwe's part i think that triple h thought this was going to go over a lot better and and i do believe that in inside of tko right now there is a little bit of, of maybe a nervous reaction to, hey, you guys said this was going to work, and, and now we have a bigger problem on our hands. And what I relate this to, Mike, is these are the two biggest names you can put on a WrestleMania card, but but you could put Michael Jordan and LeBron James in a basketball game together, and it's just the wrong time. Like, it makes yeah. sense. People, yeah, sure. People will buy tickets for the freak show, but but the reality is when The Rock gets in that ring and he's 50-plus years old, He's not the, he's, look, he's not the rock from the nineties. He's not even going to be the rock that we saw against John Cena. This is going to be a 50 plus year old rock who still needs to be baby face in the public's eyes. So he's not going to embrace this heel role. He's got to sell tequila. He's got to sell a football league. 
And when he's done with, with WrestleMania, he's got to go back to making movies. So I just, I think that people are under this belief that The Rock's going to come out here and give us all he has. And I absolutely don't think he is. Yeah, I so, oh man, I've, I've tried to digest a lot from this past weekend and uh, from yesterday as well. And it's really hard for me to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together, right? So you have Cody Rhodes win the Royal Rumble. Now, there's speculation that maybe CM Punk was supposed to win and his injury kind of derailed things. Well, okay. If so, I don't think this is the route that you still go to try and, I guess, repair everything that went wrong. You know, for me, and, and this has kind of been my rebuttal to people, Cody Rhodes wins the Rumble, right? He points to the uh, WrestleMania sign. He points at Roman Reigns. And then a, not even a week later, we have him saying, I'm coming for you, but not at WrestleMania. And that is the promo that I'm stuck on with this whole thing, is I'm not coming for you at WrestleMania. Now, over the past couple of days, I've seen people talking about, oh, well, WWE might be fooling us. This, you know, this might have been the plan all along. Then I'm seeing that The Rock versus Roman has been planned since January 3rd. There's a whole bunch of crap just on the table right now that makes zero sense. Last night, I thought we'd get a little bit of clarity. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, I'm in the camp of I want to see Roman versus The Rock, but not this way. Yeah, 100%. Not, not this way. And, you know, I am kind of leaning towards I want to see Cody finish the story. I mean, they've basically made us invest our time to see him play this story out for two years. And when we just think it's about time, you're telling me that, oh, we're just going to pull it away and give it to The Rock on a whim? I, 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 to me, that's irritating as a wrestling fan, honestly. Um, and somebody that is actually going to WrestleMania, I, you know, sure, is The Rock versus Roman something I'd like to see? Absolutely. But I want to see Cody finish. I want to see Roman lose his titles. I want to see that next chapter of the story between Roman and Cody. You know, which way that, you know, Cody goes, which way Roman goes. It's it's just a big mess, man. And this press conference on Thursday, we'll see what happens. Uh, it, to me, I'm still kind of just trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. I, I'm with you. And one thing you said that I want to kind of piggyback off of, I I am not a huge Cody Rhodes guy by any person. It's the two years that you've shoved this down our throat and told us how important this was to to the the history of WWE that Cody needed this. And, and I'll take it one step further. I, you know, things happen. I don't think, I think Cody was supposed to win the Rumble the whole time. I think that's bullshit. I, yeah. I think that may be them trying to cover their ass at this point. I don't think, we've talked about this. I don't think there was any chance that they had CM Punk winning the Royal Rumble. I think CM Punk was going to win the Elimination Chamber. That's yeah, where they yeah, had yeah. him slotted in. I I still, I, I honestly believe this was a gross overreaction to there's too many Vince McMahon headlines. The Rock is the guy who fixes that. And, and I also think the problem is for me that the WWE tries to sell us on WrestleMania being the Super Bowl. That, you know, that's the comparison they make. They did it in the Bianca Belair and Montez Ford show. That's the Super Bowl, right? You, you yeah. work all year to earn a spot at WrestleMania. And then you tell me the guy who, who won every playoff game, Cody Rhodes has done it. He beat Brock Lesnar. He won the Royal Rumble. He's won. And you're going to pull that team that won that conference championship game and go, oh, by the way, you're not in the Super Bowl. We've got a more popular team that we'd like to put in the Super Bowl. And that leads me to the, the argument that a lot of the IWC make that is, well, The Rock just is more popular. He just sells more tickets. That's fine. I'm, I'm all good with that argument then Logan Paul needs to main event night one of WrestleMania because he is the next biggest person on that card. If we're going to yeah. play the game that it's just about looking at, at Twitter or X and seeing how many followers you have, that's fine. Put Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins or, or somebody else and, and just start looking at who has the most followers and build your card that way. I don't think you can build a card around who's most popular. And, and I don't think The Rock can fix, you know, some of these, these internal problems they have. My rebuttal to that would be, how popular do we think The Rock actually is, considering the reaction that's happened over the last couple of days? Because he's got a lot of negativity over this whole situation. 100%. So that leads me to, it leads me to believe that potentially the old heads, which, you know, I'm 
maybe half and half, old half, yeah. half and half. Yeah. To me, this WrestleMania was since 39 when Cody lost, this was the WrestleMania that we're finishing the story. Mm-hmm. I, I knew I knew from that night, Philadelphia, that's <sighs> that's where this thing closes up. And it, it it's just a shame to see again, we could be getting swerved. And if we do, that's a hell of a job by the WWE. But th- this is not the way to go about it. I think they're going to try and sell it to us as they're swerving us. But I think they're going to react. I, th- I do think. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But I'm with you. I, I think that there's this gross overestimation how big The Rock is. And, and on top of that, even if The Rock is as big as, as WWE wants to believe he is, this WrestleMania wasn't in trouble. The tickets, I mean, it was selling. It was right on schedule. Don't you think that you could look down the road at a, at a premium live event that maybe you thought might have needed a little boost, a SummerSlam, something like that, and you go, that's where we put The Rock. Yep. Cody and Roman are perfectly fine. Nobody's complaining that this is going to be the main event, or, or not a vast majority of people are complaining that this is our main event. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. All right, so let's kind of piggyback on that. This is going to be a lot of the show about this, but there's speculation, Mike, that last night on Monday Night Raw, WWE went out of its way to turn down the crowd mics and silence some of the chants during Monday Night Raw. This is a two-part question for you. Do you think that that information is accurate and that WWE was silencing the crowd? And then how do you feel about WWE kind of controlling the narrative by either pumping in or, or taking out crowd noise. Yeah, so um, I did a little digging, and I listened to the Busted Open show every day on SiriusXM. They had callers call in from last night's show, and they confirmed that they definitely eliminated a lot of the crowd noise last night. They said that they was hot. it was a hot crowd. There was a lot of Rocky Sucks chants that we did not get through the television. And to me, that just screams damage control. Um, you know, they're dealing with a reaction that they did not expect to potentially get. Um, and Cody Rhodes actually tweeted during Monday Night Raw. I don't know if you've seen that. It's about like 930 ish when, um, Tazawa and Ivar were going at it. And I think that was also a damage control treat, uh, tweet because listen, the WWE is in dangerous territory right now. I think we talked about hijacking shows before. This is legit going to happen. Oh, yeah. And they've got a serious problem on their hands if they don't get ahead of this. And my only fear is that they can now play damage control and try and control things and correct it. But you've already steered the WWE universe in one direction, and we're kind of salty about it. And I think it's going to be an issue that they're going to have to deal with from now until April. I, I think you're right. I think that, look, it's it's TKO's show. They could, It's WWE's show. They could do whatever they want. Private company, if you want to turn the crowd down, you want to turn them up, that's fine. That's what. That's your decision. I just think, and I, you know, I know I, <clears throat> I'm a broken clock. I keep talking about the same thing. I, this Vince McMahon thing, with, with all of this kind of hiding and all this shit that's been kind of hidden under the rug for the last, 10, 15 years that we don't know about Vince McMahon, I think right now I'd go transparency. We're, we're going to be organic. We're going to be transparent. You guys, we're not trying to manipulate the audience at all. If this is what you guys want, then then we'll listen and we'll pay attention. And they did a little bit of that by at least acknowledging that this was going on at the beginning yeah. of the show. And I think it's funny. I think Pat McAfee is, is kind of a loose cannon and dangerous to have in that situation because he's just going to fucking let it fly. He's going to say whatever he wants. And then I think Michael Cole feeds off that energy. And I, and I do believe that, that Triple H and this WWE regime don't necessarily, they're not in the ears of everybody the same way Vince McMahon was. They're, they're going to let those things fly and roll with it. They can control the crowd noise. But <clears throat> I just thought Triple H was better than this. I, I guess from, from the last six months of Triple H kind of doing so much right, it felt like we were on this path to like, a wrestling utopia and it felt like wrestling hasn't been this big in a long time to then this knee jerk reaction where we just try to overcorrect a ship that's going the wrong direction. And we're back to trying to like shove things down people's throat and shove opinions down people's throat. I, it bothers me because it feels like same old WWE, just new faces in charge. 
Whereas I thought maybe Nick Khan and Triple H had more of the people's best interest at mind. I'm like you. I looked on the internet. I 100% believe they turned down the crowd. They, they allowed for a little bit at the beginning. I think the Rocky sucks thing surprised the shit out of them. Yeah. <clears throat> and, I, and I think that's going to be interesting because I don't think the Rock wants to be healed. I no. just, I just, that energy to me, like there's, there's no benefit. The rock is not a pro wrestler anymore. He thought no, he was no. going to come back and be a hero. So he doesn't want to be a heel. And I thought they did a good job throughout most of the show of keeping it chaotic enough that there wasn't a lot of time for those chants, but, but the crowd will find time to say what they want to say w- when they can. I, I, once again, private company, do whatever the hell you want, but like, I, WWE has done its best to to kind of eliminate the fantasy part of wrestling, right? We don't have an Undertaker anymore. We don't have these over-the-top characters. And they've really tried to lay into the organic, like, social media, and these are real people. And then all of a sudden, you have an organic situation taking place. And, and now it feels like instead of letting it snowball out of control and letting the crowd hijack the show and acknowledging that... It, it, it does feel to me like they're going to try to mold this into what they want it to be. And that that is what scares me. And I think WWE is at its best when it's organic, when you have the yes movement, when you have CM Punk, who is really a little bit upset with what's going on, when you have Sami Zayn kind of growing in popularity that, that they can't not acknowledge, you know, his, his position in the bloodline. So I think... You know, it, WWE said it's worst when, when they're shoving things down our throat. And, and that's what I'm afraid of is, look, I don't like when they remove crowd noise <clears throat> any more than I like when they pump in crowd noise for someone like Dominic Mysterio, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it creates this false narrative. You get this group of IWC fans who go crazy and tell you that Dominic Mysterio is just the greatest wrestler of all time because look at the reactions he gets when, when then you go to a show – and he definitely gets reactions, but it's not on the level that, that you're being convinced on TV. So I don't love this. I, I, yeah. I absolutely don't love that. I agree. I agree. All right. So if there's one shining light coming out of all of this, you know, all these injuries, all this crazy you know, booking, it, it's got to be Drew McIntyre's had a resurgence in the last two or three weeks. And so I want to know your opinion, Mike. How do you feel about Drew McIntyre just basically letting loose. And I really feel like this may be Drew McIntyre, the person and not the character. How do you feel about this? I mean, I love it, man. I love it. You know, I I've been waiting for him to heel turn for quite a, quite a while now because his character just got kind of bland. Right. I mean, it was great when he won the rumble and he went to mania, but you know, he suffered from the pandemic era. And I think, you know, it was all good and well when the fans started coming back. But it just it, the whole whiny kind of persona that he had leading up to this was just kind of old. And I think right around the time that I think it was at Clash of the Castle when he play, uh, went against Roman, I think we can kind of start to feel like, OK, something's something's happening here. And uh, yeah, man, I, I think him leaning into what happened with CM Punk, even though it was a freak you know, accident, wasn't scripted or anything like that. I love it, man. I love it. And it, just keep milking it because it ad, it adds to the character. It adds to his credibility. And I think if he ends up at Mania in a title picture, I think he's going to be a favorite. And, you know, we need it. We need, you know, give him a heel championship run because you would assume, well, I guess that's off the table. Cody would have won the universal title, that baby face. And then you would but. Yeah, man, I, I, I've enjoyed it. I think this is his best work that he's done in quite some time. And uh, I, I think, again, like you said, it's been a resurgence. So you said something about, you know, the freak accident with CM Punk. I don't I don't know that all of this is coincidence as far as I think when CM Punk got injured, I think he might have felt some obligation to pull Drew aside. This feels like this is ripped out of the, the playbook of CM Punk. Oh yeah. This yeah, feels yeah. like a very CM Punk idea. The disgruntled employee who just is pissed off at everybody and is blaming everybody. And it it absolutely works for Drew McIntyre. I'm with you. We did the in-between thing, that didn't work. We've done the whiny baby face, that doesn't work. This this is Drew McIntyre. This is what I want to see on a weekly basis. The guy who just really doesn't give a shit. 
He's just no, going right. to go out the, the t-shirts, the, the things like that. And even if it's manufactured, it at least feels organic enough that, that I'm laughing when I see the t-shirt and, and, and Adam oh, Pierce yeah. did a good job of, you know, of, of acknowledging the t-shirt, even though it's already in, you know, the WWE shop and things like that. But here's my problem. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep going back to this. Drew McIntyre is not going to be immune to the fallout of all of this same bullshit that we're talking about with Cody Rhodes and, and the rock. This, here's the problem. I think we were slated for Drew McIntyre to win the world heavyweight championship at WrestleMania. I think that he was, he was going to win it and, and Damian priest was going to cash in. And then we were going to get a storyline that involved a back and forth between Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest for the next six months. You're talking post CM Punk injury. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. I think that was that was kind of the the thought process after CM Punk went out. Then I think you had all this change up, and I, the 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 common denominator is here. What do you do with with Cody Rhodes? That, that's the right. problem, right? He throws the wrench into everything because if he's not part of finishing the story, you feel like he has to do something uh, kind of dramatic at WrestleMania to make up for not being that main. I don't know, man. That that confuses me. But I now what do you do in the World Heavyweight Championship? Do you, do you go Seth, Cody, Drew? Do you go Seth, Cody, Drew, Sammy? Do you go Fatal 4-Way? They keep teasing Sami Zayn as this underdog. Does somehow Sami slide out of there with a world heavyweight championship because all these other guys, you know, are, are so involved with each other? I ultimately feel like, and I keep going back to Cody, but I ultimately feel like Cody can't win the world heavyweight championship. I think that diminishes everything about what his story is. Yeah, and I think another interesting thing that we have to consider is the longer they draw this out, the longer we're not going to be paying much attention to the other things that are happening. Cause I noticed oh, yeah. myself last night, I was waiting for some information or something to happen. And I just completely ignored the rest of the night. You're like exactly I was right. waiting for Cody and the longer they stretch this <laughs> out, the longer this, you know, a lot of people are going to start ignoring other things and a lot of things won't get put together. So, uh, you know, they, they've, they've got an obligation to get something sorted out here quite soon. No, you're, you're exactly right. Because I remember I turned on the show, made sure I caught the first 15. And then I had things to do. And I just kind of let it play in the background. And, and I was yeah. like, if Cody comes back, I'll pay attention. And then they, right. they, they've doubled down on this idea that Thursday's going to now be storyline. It's it's less about being a press conference. And it's, it's now storyline. Thursday's a must watch so that we can find out, do they give us more information? Cause they absolutely gave us nothing on Monday. Nothing. They, they teased it, but they did not give it to us. I mean, they got to let drew cook. I, I think you got to What my biggest problem with WWE has always been not striking when irons are hot. And, and I think drew McIntyre, this may be the best drew is going to be. And so I do feel like now is the time. If Seth is banged up, Drew wasn't wrong when he said, you did a good job. Now it's my turn to kind of, you know, pick this up and carry it to the next level. And, and we talk about he's owed this, this championship run. Th this yeah. is the time. I, I absolutely yeah. believe this is the time. I had one, this was kind of an off topic question for you, Mike. And, okay. and I don't know how I got to this, but when I was looking at the calendar for, for yeah. WWE, SummerSlam has almost always been August, correct? And it's usually yeah. late August. So, from what I bash in Berlin is August 31st. Is that replacing SummerSlam? No, there's no way. So you can't. So two yeah, August, two August premium live events. Unless they push SummerSlam July. Oh no. Money in the banks July. Isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. That's that to me. That's, that's interesting. I mean, they definitely have, I mean, SummerSlam's not one that you can just ax. So yeah, I got, wow. I, you know, that is interesting, um, but no, I, I, SummerSlam is definitely <laughs> now. Now you got me thinking, <laughs> but no, yeah, yeah, I think SummerSlam is definitely that's one that you lock in. The Germany one is kind of I, I would I would imagine that you kind of treat that like a Saudi event, right? I mean, I see. I don't think so. I think that they are. I mean, I think that all these premium live events from here on out are going to be international, and th that's not okay. that's not going to be a special one off thing. I think they're okay. sold on kind of the the premium live events being a world tour. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I yeah I that's what I was trying to figure out was looking at a calendar and it's bash at Berlin which kind of has the feel of like SummerSlam I don't and I there's no announcement that's been made about SummerSlam. Summer right 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 huh. 
That is something to think about, yeah. So, and it's got to be a summer event, right? So you either move, right. like you said, you either move money in the bank up or you you have uh, two in August, which seems just weird to me. Yeah, yeah. To do two August events. Yeah, because they've spread them apart pretty good recently. So, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. All right, Mike, last question on the rundown here. Lost my camera, but we'll we'll finish this thing out. So Thursday, we're going to kind of get an unprecedented press conference that we've gotten press conferences before, but this one feels a little bit different. This feels a little bit special. And, and the fact that this is more like an episode of wrestling now than it is just a, a media event to, to make announcements. What do you actually think gets announced at this press conference? What are your predictions for what information they actually give us? Um, I mean, I think everybody's expecting the main events to be announced. I mean, I, you would hope that there's some kind of a direction given to us. Um, this is, it's just weird because we don't get press conferences for PLEs, let, let alone WrestleMania. So it, like you mentioned earlier, this may be going with the storyline, which would make sense as well. Um, I just hope we get some kind of a, a what or why answer from the rock Roman or Cody. And I, it just there's a part of me that really hopes that we're not getting Seth Rollins versus Cody Rhodes because listen, man, we've seen them three times already, and Cody's won all three times. So we're gonna have a fourth time, and now he's gonna beat him again, or like you know what's the deal with that? But ultimately, I think this is something that was set up with the Super Bowl in mind. Super Bowl is also in Las Vegas this weekend. I think that means that they think they can get people in there, um, and. I think it's just a public, pub, 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 I can't even speak, a pub, uh, a pub event because other than, other than them announcing what's going to happen moving forward, I, I just don't know why you, why you have something like this. So I think, I think you're right. <clears throat> I think initially this was going to be a big Super Bowl hoopla. We've got the rock, the rock is here and everybody's going to come over and all the, all these big football players, everybody's going to be excited. And then I think, this Cody thing kind of grew legs of its own. And now they're, they're looking at this as, oh, this is an opportunity to create more story on a national headline. I'm going to go real wild here. I, I have a wild prediction for what happens at this press conference. Now, th there's a possibility they do a complete 180, right? And, and The Rock comes out and he plays babyface and he says, look, I heard the people. I'm, I'm going to back off. Let's let's do what we originally planned. And The, the Rock can walk out of there as a baby face. But I think there, there's, there's an element to this that could be fun. If they really want to get behind this We Want Cody movement, I want Roman to say something kind of out of pocket to Cody Rhodes. Something about Dusty. Something about, you know, you're a quitter. You didn't get the job done. And I want Cody to snap, flip a table, go nuts during this press conference. And I want WWE to have to suspend Cody Rhodes. So I want Cody off of TV and I want them to let this Cody movement take life of its own. Every week, people chanting and screaming and, and, and going wild for him. And, and I want at the last minute for The Rock to play babyface and be the one who brings Cody back. To, Interesting. I, I just that's the only way to kind of now spin this and make it seem like it was story all along to me if they if okay. they just 180 and they come out and they do the you know, I guess the rock can save face but it's it's mud on the face of Triple H and TKO because it's we fucked up we we did this wrong I think if Cody snaps it can take Cody to a different level that that's just my I, I to me I think that that, that could work Mm -hmm. I, I just I'm, I'm against if, if they come out let's say this, this this press conference is just them going we're doing Roman and the rock and we're doing Cody versus Seth I I there's no telling what happens I mean right. they could lose control of, of an audience extremely quickly they have to be self-aware enough to understand that that that's not the play at this point something has to happen Thursday that corrects uh, you know the the course of, of what we're seeing and, and you made a point earlier you said cody tweeted the uh, like be patient 
thing. Yeah, yeah. That to me, one hundred percent, like you said, felt like something somebody told Cody. Hey, you got to help us get this under control. Oh yeah. You see, oh, they're yeah. they're now mad at the Rock, and the Rock is upset. You know. Yeah. Like yeah, if they yeah, go through yeah. with this, the fucking ego on the Rock to think that he's just gonna power through this thing. Man, it's this 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 whole thing got a, a, a lot interesting uh, very quickly, and it was unexpected. But uh, again. I, I'm gonna sit back and and, and see what happens. Yeah, man. let me ask you a question. What do yeah. we got? We got it's less than sixty days. How many times does The Rock show up in person on SmackDown to promote this match? Uh, I mean, he's got Thursday. Now we assume that he's gonna take a match with Roman. If that's the so, case, yeah, yeah. So then. let's let's. I'm on the on the principal idea that they go through with it and they say it's Roman versus The Rock. We're not budging. How many yeah. times does The Rock show up? in the next four to eight weeks to to promote this match i mean it's got to be it's got to be quite frequent because how do you build up one of the biggest matches of all time with maybe like two or three appear like we can't we can't sit through that they tried it with stone cold though remember with ko and stone cold they made ko go out there week after week and promote that match I think what they did with that though was they speculated it might be a match. True, like they kind of true. It, they left it. They left it open as a, like come to WrestleMania and we can kind of talk. About, like this would be made in stone, so you would think that there's some kind of a build from now till then. Because again, you can't have the biggest match of all time with no build. Uh, it, like sh- maybe you can say, oh, it builds itself. Well, yeah, cool. But we've pushed Cody and Roman aside, which. Even with that, how many times does Roman show up if it's Cody and Roman? It, it's just, it's a mess. It's <laughs> and a and mess. so, wait, w- when is WrestleMania? It's April? For, first week in April. And UFL starts March 30th? Yeah. So this, yeah. I see, I to me, this is just the fuck rock. This is the rock promo tour. Yeah. How yeah. many times does he mention UFL? How many times does he mention, you know, that, that's, that bothers me. I just, I am not sold on this idea that the rock's back to be a wrestler. Yeah, and I don't think he's got it in him, man. No, like, no. Last time we saw him, he got hurt. Last time he did yeah, this, and that yeah. was what almost ten years ago. Yeah, and he looks very winded when he came back uh, a couple weeks back. <sighs> he's not in wrestling shape, and, and you're kidding yourself. We see CM Punk, a guy who was out less time than The Rock, and he's not in wrestling shape. And so The yeah. Rock thinks he's going to get this together to main event WrestleMania in eight weeks. I I find this hard to believe. If I was The Rock, I would be thanking God that that this Cody movement happened, and I would go pave the path for Cody, give me three to six months to get ready, and we can do something at SummerSlam or Crown Jewel. Yeah. I, yeah. I, again, this whole, this press conference on Thursday is going to— I mean, it's so I mean, unprecedented. It, yeah, yeah. It's, hopefully, we get something. How how bad is it going to suck if it's just more bullshit? <laughs> they, 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 they're setting themselves up for some bad crowds, man. And like you That's said, how point. how how long until this overshadows like elimination chamber? I, I, I mean, it already is. Yeah, it already is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's at the that's the end of the, that's a, think about that. Elimination chamber is at the end of the month in a whole different country in a humongous stadium. And, and we're not even thinking about it. Right barely now. talking about it. Barely talking about it. We don't even know what the men's match is. We no idea. No clue. We don't know if there's going to no be idea. one. Again, no idea. <laughs> All right, let's end the episode by diving into the casual wrestling mailbag. Uh, you can submit questions by emailing questions at casualwrestlingcommunity.com or by joining the Casual Wrestling Discord. This week's question comes from Starry Night Sky in the Discord, and they ask Mike, how would we book Tiffany Stratton and Naomi now that they are full members of SmackDown? So last week we floated out the idea at WrestleMania of uh, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill as tag team partners. I've kind of yeah. cooled off on that a little bit because I, that's a lot of star power in one place to be wasted in the, in the women's tag team division. I've actually pivoted to the idea of at WrestleMania doing Tiffany Stratton versus Bianca Belair. And having Tiffany Stratton pick up a win against Bianca Belair. I don't think a loss will hurt Bianca Belair. People will forget that very quickly. But a win for Tiffany Stratton 
would do the same kind of thing that, that Kevin Owens beating John Cena did for his career. It would kind of catapult her into a, a main event status very early on in her career, which I think she's ready for. I think Tiffany Stratton can handle that. And SmackDown's going to need new stars. And at 24 years old, I, I think it's an opportunity. I, I think when you look at the WrestleMania landscape with, with EO Sky and Bayley now set in stone, and we assume Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch is what's happening on the other side. Bianca's kind of left out in the cold. And mm-hmm. you could go the tag team route with her, but I just, I don't know if long-term that really benefits anybody. I like the idea of, of now pairing Jade Cargill with Naomi because Naomi can do the same thing. She can work okay. the bulk of the match, let Jade take the hot tag, get the big finish, kind of like uh, Raquel Rodriguez and Aaliyah did where they worked together. And so I think you can have that same dynamic, and I think it works just as well with Naomi. And so that's how I book Naomi is, is with Jade Cargill as a tag team partner, and I would book Tiffany Stratton to, to beat Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. Yeah, I mean, so Tiffany is SmackDown. So she's obviously not in a title picture anytime soon with EO and Bailey kind of lined up, and I'm assuming there'll be backlash after – uh wrestlemania as well so we kind of move that move that to the side for right now Mm -hmm. i think i think with tiffany it's just more of just getting her on tv getting eyes on her and kind of building momentum right i don't think she needs to go on like a winning streak but win win loss you know something like that maybe an interesting storyline with a top star somewhere along the lines because i think at at some point she's going to be the champion of some brand. Uh, I, I think she's just got it written on her. She's talented. She's got the look. So I think that's kind of where I would go for right now, kind of put her in holding, but also get her on TV and just kind of get her ready, get get crowds inter- you know, interested in her that maybe don't watch NXT regularly mm-hmm. and uh, just kind of get her name out there. Uh, with Naomi, it's interesting because I don't know what you do with her, honestly. I think, to me, I think the main reason she came back was to be with her husband full time. Yeah, I, I get that. Kind of, so I, I don't I don't know. Obviously, she wants to wrestle and she wants to, you know, do some things with the WWE. But I think a main thing for her was to be with Jimmy again so they don't have to have different schedules and whatnot. I do think it'd be interesting to think of her winning money in a bank, though, because I think she would be an interesting and a, a good fit for that kind of, you know, situation where she can carry a briefcase she can tease you know she's a big star so it's not like you know people wouldn't be paying attention to her um and you know one of those situations where she can cash in have another short run at a title and then kind of i guess walk into the sunset but outside of that i think the jade cargill comment that you made that's interesting i could see that as well but i i kind of <laughs> just see her kind of making appearances here and there maybe a storyline here and there and then potentially a money in the bank winner um I, I as far as beyond that i can't really at this point I'd, I'd have to see exactly what creatively they do with her the reason i like her paired up with jade cargill is naomi's such kind of a likable character yeah. that when they do decide because ultimately jade's got to turn right and, and become yeah. a, a big time heel when they finally decide to do that i think you know turning on naomi gets you impact and, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you. Naomi, she's kind of like a, a spectacle, right? Like her entrance and, and she's got energy. I think people go and are excited to see Naomi in the ring. They don't necessarily yeah. have to have her win. I agree with you on that. But I do think putting her with Jade gives Jade a little bit of instant credibility, a little bit of like swagger early on in her career. Because I do think Jade is going to have a hard time finding her footing because the immediate thing that everybody's going to do is, is compare everything she does to her AEW run. Yeah. You know, so if you recreate a group like her baddies, everybody's going to point to that. If you, you know, if she doesn't win every match early on, everybody's going to scream bad booking. So that, that's why I like pairing her with Naomi. It gives the, the women's tag team division while they, they play this game where it looks like it's, it's got quite a bit of talent. Outside of like Katana Chance and Caden Carter, Chelsea Green, there's not a lot going on there. So I could see rolling out of WrestleMania, the Kabuki Warriors, and and Naomi and Jade going at it. That's that's just what I'm my possible opinion. I can see it. I can see it. 
But that's all the time we have this week for the Casual Wrestling Show. Make sure to like and share this episode as much as you can. As a member of the Casual Wrestling community, feel free to screen record and clip any of your favorite parts of this show and put them on any social media platform you would like. As always, I am the Notorious Nerdy D. That is Milwaukee Mike, and we will see you guys next week. Better bring it if we debating going toe to toe. No holding back, I'm speaking the facts. Let me introduce you to the dope show. Nerdy D and Milwaukee Mike, bringing the energy. If you a fan of wrestling and especially WWE, this is the casual wrestling show. Casual wrestling show.